develop uh, the uh, belief about Jesus from eschatology, that is end times. Scholars at the turn of the 20th century began to see Jesus in his eschatology context. So that's a little bit about Bultmann the man. Now the method. Bultmann believed that we couldn't know anything about Jesus. He believed that all that we know about Jesus was legend. He believed that the intellectual tool to get behind these legends to find out something of of perhaps not true history but of maybe something of the what the real jesus could have been he, his intellectual tool was form criticism which went back to gunkel and many of the his, history of religious school uh scholars form criticism believed that within about 16 years the life of Jesus and all the information about him had been lost by the early church. And so what happened, it was become, his life had become legend. And what form criticism sought to do was to gather various parts of the story, such as parables and miracle stories, and, and bring these little parts together and try to discern some patterns within those parts. And the patterns and the similarities that they would find would give them an indication of maybe what the issues were really behind the early church and maybe behind the real Jesus. The problem with this methodology is the assumption that information was lost over those first 16 years. <coughs> Excuse me. That was the assumption. But um, we can look at Bultmann's method and see how it falls to the ground and how modern scholarship has come to see that Bultmann's uh, form criticism and the assumptions behind it are really uh, not according to uh, good historical study. So, for example, if you look at Luke chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Even as you delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Luke uses the Greek word eyewitnesses, and it's the same Greek word as Polybius used, a 200 BC uh, Greek historian. And the Greek historian believed that you should use eyewitnesses as a, as a development of your historical writing. Luke is mimicking Polybius. So what that tells you, the genre of the Gospels were trying to do history based on eyewitness material. This new scholarship that's been developing over the last 15 years, especially uh, from the scholar Richard Balcom and others uh, who were following in his footsteps, has kind of challenged the Bultmann um, ideas. Secondly, if we turn to Acts chapter 121, Acts chapter 121, and if you want to, uh, I don't claim any originality <coughs> in this bit of the message. If you want to go to listen to Stuart Olliot on Rudolf Bultmann, he will give you a few pointers as well because uh, a few parts of this, this lecture in this bit about his method and criticism uh, uh, sorry, and his message are uh, based on a few minutes of um, Stuart Olliot uh, on his lecture, Rudolf Bultmann. <coughs> so just to give credit where credit is due. So if you go to Acts chapter 1 verse 21, remembering the Bultmann scheme is that material developed over time and it was lost and it became mythological. But if you look at Acts chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Acts chapter 1, verse 21. 
Wherefore, if these men which have company, company with us all the time that the Lord went in and out among us. Here, the early church is choosing apostles and the criteria for being apostle was that you knew the life of Jesus. So it's very clear that the early church had leaders that, that were there to check whether information was correct or not. It's impossible that there were, would have been any information lost or any information made into legend when there were certain key people such as the apostles there to check that information. And then finally, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 3, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you were saved if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of the above five hundred brethren, at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. That passage of 1 Corinthians 15 is uh, especially from verse 1, to uh, verse 5 is clearly goes back to historical sources of at least two years after the resurrection of Christ most scholars would agree that because agree with that because if you study rabbinic uh, teaching and rabbinic thinking some key words that Paul uses of first importance are key rabbinical words that were used about that time in the historical frame and so scholars have framed this passage as a holy source of the life of Jesus. And, and, and if that is the case, if this is information within two years of Jesus' death and resurrection, then it makes it a nonsense for Boltman to say that information about Jesus has been lost and it became mythological. So that's his method, and now his message. Rudolf Boltman had the idea of demythologizing. The idea was that modern man can't accept the miracles and the supernatural. So therefore we have to strip all the miracles away and then we'll have the kerygma. That is the story of the, the, the death and resurrection of Christ. Now this death and resurrection is not historical, but it's the story behind Jesus. So, for Boltman, the way to reach modern man is strip away the miracles and get to know the kerygma and proclaim the kerygma, the story of the life, uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus, but it's not based on history. So, his relevance today. What is the relevance of Rudolf Boltman? Well, the Boltman ideas weaken the church's confidence in the gospel. Round about the early 1960s, there was a book in the UK written by a bishop called Honest to God. It shook the Anglican church and it shook the nation. And the reason why it shook the nation is it was using many ideas that taken from Boltman. We see that there is a lack of emphasis upon the real historical Christ, the real death and resurrection of Jesus, it weakened the church's emphasis on the gospel. Secondly, it weakened the church's confidence in the word of God, because looking for all these various sources under the gospels undermined the Bible. And so there was a crisis of confidence in what the Bible had to say about the life of Jesus. If you were a typical seminary student in the 1950s and 60s, you were made to feel severely intellectually backward if you didn't accept Boltman's ideas. And many capitulated and collapsed under the intellectual pressure of the universities and seminaries that propagated Boltman's ideas. And we're still living with that legacy today within the church, both in the West 
uh, both yes both in America and the UK um, and countries like Japan that were influenced by Rudolf Bultmann so we've looked at the problem the Enlightenment we've looked at Bultmann basically coming on the back of the Enlightenment and his influences upon the church in the West we've looked at the question how do we reach modern man and we've seen that Boltman sought to reach modern man by stripping back the miraculous and proclaiming the charisma. I would say that Boltman's project was completely misguided and was actually dangerous so if we if you come to Galatians chapter 1 Galatians chapter 1 <coughs> It says, Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. <coughs> and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present world, evil world, according to the will of God our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have 